You are watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. And the Sweet 16 Saturday Showcase action continues with the NC State Wolfpack and Indiana Hoosiers. The Wolfpack looking to advance to the Elite Eight for the second time in program history behind the likes of Alisa Kunain, who has done nothing but, you know, have a double-double right before this, bringing them into the Sweet 16. She really is a star player for the Wolfpack. And if she is going, how can the Wolfpack succeed? Well, just to play through her, she's got such a diverse game. She can score it in the paint. She can also step out, face up, and run in the floor in transition and keeping the pressure on Indiana. You know, and on the other side of the floor, you got Indiana with their own quality inside player and Mackenzie Holmes. She's 6'3". She averages 18 points a game, eight rebounds, but she's also the seventh best field goal shooter in the country. There will be a battle royale yes. in the post tonight. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and we are ready for it because we've already seen some battles for sure. We had an overtime game and Baylor taking on Michigan. Oh, and you love this. This is execution in late game situations, Carolyn. Baylor was, I thought they were going to play keep away, but Moon Urson, she snuck in on that baseline extended the lead to three. Meanwhile, Connecticut Huskies, they cruise to a win over Iowa by the tune of 20 points, Coach. Well, they put some points on the board with shots like this. They got off to a fast start, but had to fight Iowa off to win it. They absolutely did, but it did set up a pretty cool Elite Eight matchup. We're going to get the two seed in Baylor taking on the one seed in Ouch. Connecticut in the tournament for the first time since 2010. It I'm, feels good I'm to here say for that. it. I am so here, here for it. it. All right, your Sweet 16 action now continues with the Wolf Pack and the Hoosiers. Enjoy the call of the game. We will see you at halftime. Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, and Holly Rowe on the call. All right, Maria, well, thank you very much. In San Antonio, Texas, everybody aiming for that trophy to cruise down the Riverwalk. It'll be NC State, the top seed in the Mercado region, taking on the four seed, Indiana, here tonight in this Sweet 16 matchup, taking a look at the Mercado region of the bracket. We know in the Riverwalk region, it's going to be UConn against Baylor for a trip to the Final Four. The winner of this game between NC State and Indiana will face the winner of Texas A&M and Arizona later tonight. As we welcome you again courtside, hey everybody, Ryan Rucco with the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. What a day of basketball it's been, and still two more games to come here from San Antonio. In this game tonight, we just heard Coach Landers talking about a battle royale. Rebecca, this should be a fun contest in the post. The best kind of battle, and that's the battle of the bigs. And for NC State, their anchor inside is Elisa Kinane. She leads the team in scoring and rebounding and finishing in the paint. 16 points a game, eight rebounds a game, she can come up big in those moments as well. And for Indiana, Coach Terry Morin told us Mac has to show up in a big way. That's Mackenzie Holmes. Yeah, we see the numbers for Kunane and what she's been able to do. And now we see Mackenzie Holmes. There she is. And she can get it done inside on both ends of the floor. She scores inside. She defends three blocks per game. She is going to have to have a big one today, Ryan. Well, Mackenzie Holmes certainly has been impressive as of late. Her last seven games shooting 72% from the floor. Let's check in now with the third member of our broadcast team, Holly Rowe. Hey, Brian, there is a developing story for NC State. One of their best seniors and key players with nearly 12 points per game and seven rebounds. Uh, she is out for this game, likely. She's got a patella injury. Uh, Kayla Jones hurt that knee coming down awkwardly in the very first game they played here in San Antonio. They have been trying to diagnose her. She was able to go through limited pregame warm-up. She is in uniform, but if she were to play in this game, it would be very limited minutes. That is a huge loss for NC State. So they will look to a sophomore. That is Jada Boyd, who will move into that starting lineup. And she's been very productive at times. Had a 20-point scoring game earlier this year against Georgia Tech. We'll see if she can step up for the Wolfpack. Well, Wes Moore has called Jones the glue to this team, but also says we are so fortunate to have Jada Boyd. He is the ACC and WBCA Coach of the Year. And Terry Morin has led Indiana to its first Sweet 16 
in the tournament's current format. Made the round of 16 back in 1983, but the field was just 32 teams back then. An outstanding accomplishment for the Hoosiers. And Terry Morin saying, we know we have to get our hands dirty if we're going to win games. No exception when it comes to this contest against NC State. A trip to the Elite Eight on the line as Ghoul Bay and Boyd jump it up and NC State wins the tip. NC State in the white jerseys with the red trim and Indiana in the red with the white trim. Little pull-up jumper won't go from Berger. Loves her mid-range game and the rebound taken in by Kinane. Both of these teams primarily man-to-man -man teams on the defensive end of the floor. How about Boyd? The footwork just left it short. Take a look at our Capital One starting lineups for Indiana. Nicole Cardano Hillary, Ali Pepper, Grace Berger, Mackenzie Holmes, and Alexa Goulbe, the five. Cardano Hillary has really done a nice job in the backcourt for this Indiana squad. Here trying to hang with Perez. Take a look at our Capital One starting lineups for NC State. Reina Perez, Kai Crutchfield, Jakia Brown-Turner, Jada Boyd, and Kunain. This is something to keep an eye on here early, Ryan. Mackenzie Holmes with her first foul. Her defensive presence is going to be big as they try to limit Elisa Kunain. So an early foul on Holmes. Something to watch for sure. Holmes sticking with Kanane. Indiana wanted it up and down. Didn't get it, and Boyd takes advantage. And especially if Boyd's defender helps in on Kanane, she's going to have to continue to look to be aggressive to the basket. Good movement here. Hatper through the lane, flicks it out. Cardano Hillary could not get it to go. Perez around the screen from Boyd, lost it for a moment. Got it to Boyd, the jab step, the jumper, no. And the strong side rebound to Goulbe. Quickly into the front court. Goulbe a three, no. Shot it at 36% this season from downtown. It's important for both of these teams who are very good defensive teams to finish the possession by getting to the defensive boards. In particular, Indiana, Terry Warren said, we cannot give up second opportunity to NC State. Boyd, the spin and the finish inside. And Jada Boyd truly making the most of the opportunity with the injury to Kayla Jones. Terrific athlete. She can slash to the basket. You see her there posting up inside. And we talked to Westmore earlier in the season, and he said, Jada Boyd brings something we desperately need, and that is athleticism. Talk about the Indiana defense. The 80 points allowed through the first two games, fewest by a Big Ten team through two games all time, but it's NC State out to a 7-0 lead. Jada Boyd comes into this game shooting 26% from the three-point line. That's why Indiana is playing off of her, but a shooter can shoot you out of that kind of defense. She had just seven threes this season, four last season, but one in this first quarter already. Wild shot there from Holmes, who immediately tapped her jersey as if to say, my bad. Big start here for NC State. That's Boyd, back to work. That's the universal sign for my bad. <laughs> Perez trying to show the handles. Nice D there. Cardano Hillary sticking with her. Shot clock down to seven. Brown Turner pushed it out of bounds and a turnover from NC State. How about the start for Jada Boyd? Well, we talked about her and she's a handful because she can get inside, has great footwork, make moves like that, and watch out. 
Indiana if she can consistently drain that three because she's the player that they've been helping off of a little bit from the top. Here's Berger. Cardano Hillary leaves it short and Indiana yet to score in this first quarter. More than four minutes into it. Two very good defensive teams showing it there. Cardano Hillary, the effort to track it down and put it in. First bucket of the game for the Hoosiers. Terry Morin told us she is a relentless on-ball defender. You saw it there. The George Mason transfer, the all-time leading scorer there, and now another turnover from NC State. It's been hard for Indiana to get easy buckets on the offensive end, so work a little harder defensively. Come out of bounds, back in, establish, and finish. Boy, Rail Camp does a beautiful job showing the intensity on a play like that, huh? It's like there's a droid sliding in front of you. It yes. sort of feels like we're on the Death Star, but it's, it's fantastic. A jump ball. You see, there's rail cam, and as it, as it goes sliding by, it's literally, it's like R2-D2. All of a sudden, you're just like, And here's the Death Star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hope that our broadcast table has a better fate than the Death Star. <laughs> Cardano Hillary misses on that jumper. Offensive rebound. Goulbe goes up, puts it in, plus the foul. You have to continue to be relentless, especially when you're struggling in your half-court offense. One way you can do that, get to the offensive glass, finish, now to the free throw line. Alexa Goulbe from Latvia. All Big Ten honorable mention. Completes the three-point play. What do we got? Well, we are waiting on some communication for what exactly transpired there. We think it might be an infection control moment. Yes, a little uh, blood on the leg, perhaps. So, Ghoul Bay tended to by Indiana's training staff. Hey, tune in when the puck drops on the last NCAA men's ice hockey regional semifinal tonight at 10 Eastern when Minnesota and Omaha face off on ESPNU and the ESPN app and visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Ryan, right now, NC State with four turnovers. Indiana only shooting 17%, but seven more field goal attempts than the Wolfpack. Boyd can't finish that one. Here comes Berger. Five straight points from Indiana. Deep catch, the turn. Holmes is on the board. And a 7-0 response from Indiana after falling in a 7-0 hole. You want your post to be quick and decisive when they catch the basketball. Quick turn over her right shoulder, no dribble, then went back the other way. Double team too late. Indiana started this game one of 11, and they are now tied, and another turnover from NC State. Indiana fired up. Mackenzie Holmes getting position and finishing beautifully on the inside. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Dos Equis, a most interesting beer. Please enjoy responsibly. Well, former manager turned super fan, Clayton Nunn. He is here, he is loud, he's had to carry it when there's been essentially no fans in the stands and He's able to be joined by some more, about 2,800 fans allowed at the Alamo Dome for these games. Indiana on a 7-0 run after falling behind 7-0. Jada Boyd not only has all of NC State's points thus far, she has all their field goal attempts. As Holmes hits the jumper, Mackenzie Holmes, the first ever Hoosier 
to be an AP All-American honorable mention. And she scored the last two field goals for Indiana. That three is good. First field goal attempt for someone other than Boyd for NC State and Jakia Brown-Turner on the board. Hatberg will fire. Short, rebound lands in the lap of Kamein. Kinane working hard against Holmes, able to finish over the double. And that's what NC State does. They put Kinane inside to post up. They have shooters surrounding her, moving around, good action, but ultimately they want to get her a touch. Oh, nice job by Crutchfield, diving in. Lost it, threw it away, loose ball. Kinane corrals it. And another chance here for NC State. Finding the cutter, Boyd. Whips it to Crutchfield, her three is good! This time of year, she's Kai Clutchfield. 17 of 25 in her career from three during the NCAA tournament. Just silly numbers. NC State wants to play inside out. So first you see Kanane working hard, double team comes, doesn't matter. She's got the size and the skill to shoot over it. Already gone inside, well let's extend the defense and go outside. Crutchfield drains the three. What have we noticed, Ryan? When NC State doesn't turn the basketball over, they shoot at a really <laughs> high clip so far, 67%. You see those numbers for Crutchfield in eight games over a tournament career. I mean, that's just incredible. And she has had her share of game winners. Says she tries to be a second pair of eyes for Reina Perez on the floor. Indiana likes to run that on ball screen with Holmes and Berger and it was really well defended by NC State on this possession. NC State on an 8-0 run following Indiana's 9-0 run, which followed NC State's 7-0 run. Kanane connects on a three. She shoots 41% from outside the arc. One of the things that makes her so difficult to defend. We were talking to her yesterday. She said she loves watching Asia Wilson. Brianna Stewart, Elena Deladon said big players who dominate inside, but they can also handle, shoot, bring versatility. Berger, wow, how about that move and shot from Grace Berger. Again, the high screen from Holmes. Berger didn't really use it, but that's an action that Indiana really likes. Berger loves the mid-range. Paul Pierce, her favorite player, who had an epic mid-range game, our colleague. Nice dish, Berger to Holmes, just couldn't finish. Here comes Crutchfield, and a big tumble inside, and the foul's going to be against Gulbeck. Lisa Kunain has not missed a shot in this game, including this three. How you feeling about it, big girl? Right there, hold your form. Grace Berger is not going to be a three as much as a mid-range mid degree of difficulty. She won an and one. We mentioned she has that mid-range game as Perez sinks the mid-range. Berger said, sometimes people tell me I have, you know, that old man game. Said her favorite player is Paul Pierce, why she wears number 34. And he had that kind of YMCA game. As Berger tosses it aside. Hey, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 continues today on TBS and CBS or stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. You would strike me as a type of person who has an old man game. Yeah, I think that's fair. I developed a hook shot at seven. <laughs>
NC State a 2011 lead on Indiana here in the first quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup. If you like runs, you've come to the right place. What do they say, Ryan? Basketball? It's a game of runs. It sure is. Whether you're an old man or a young woman. <laughs> <laughs> About a 16 second difference game and shot clock. Boyd slips in, banks it home. What an opening quarter for Jada Boyd, now nine points. Indiana continuing to help off of Boyd onto Kinane. It's important for her to hit shots and attack. Indiana can hold for a final shot here. Five seconds left in the quarter. Wow, what a move from Hatberg who buries the three. And that will end the first quarter. NC State an eight point lead after one in this Sweet 16 matchup. Someone advances, someone goes home tonight. A fun back and forth first in San Antonio. Second quarter coming up next. What a sweet 16 it's been for teams in the Big Ten, showing out four teams into the sweet 16 from that conference. They have been terrific all season long. And what a busy day for their commissioner, Kevin Warren. He started out this morning on our court watching Iowa, popped over to the other court to watch Michigan in an overtime thriller against Baylor. And then here he is back again for Indiana. Maryland will play tomorrow. I spoke to him earlier today and he was terrific. He's so proud of the conference. He said, we have fantastic coaches not just women's basketball coaches, we have great coaches. He also addressed some of the inequities that we saw here in San Antonio with the women versus the men. He said, we are committed to making sure that each of our student athletes are getting an equitable experience. And we are constantly trying to analyze ourselves to make sure that that is happening in the Big Ten. You know, we saw Iowa play a really strong, exciting game against UConn. UConn eventually pulled away, 20-point result, but it was not a 20-point game by any means. Earlier in the incredibly hyped matchup between Iowa and UConn, really fun brand of basketball. And then Michigan, although they lost, what a performance against Baylor and just a sensational game that just ended before the start of this one between Michigan and Baylor going to overtime and just incredible back and forth drama down the stretch of that fourth quarter in overtime. And we have not yet seen the Big Ten champion in Maryland who has been playing as good a basketball as any team in the NCAA tournament. And many feel could end up being the national champions at the end of this week plus in San Antonio. Twenty-two, sixteen. 16 NC State lead. Crutchfield gets it back. Kunane double, didn't matter, couldn't finish. Boyd flew in, it's a foul on Jada Boyd. For Boyd, that will be her second personal. That last possession was NC State exhausting the post. Into the post, back out, into the post, back out, repost, back out. But Jada Boyd going to the bench. She has been so good here today. Step back three, no good for Patberg, but a whistle is gonna stay right here against NC State. Indiana has done such a good job getting to the offensive glass, fighting for those second looks. Holmes. Nice little pivot to the left hand for Mackenzie Holmes. Terry Moran said, I don't think NC State's gonna send a double team to Mackenzie Holmes. And as a result, she really felt like this was a game where she could go to work inside. Perez flicks it out. 
Crutchfield. Benin and a knock from behind by Berger. Here comes Indiana. A nice response from the Hoosiers. A 7-0 run. Berger, not that time, and Perez the rebound. Perez floats it in. Reina Perez, who Wes Moore has called a blessing for his team, the grad transfer from Cal State Fullerton. Berger couldn't finish. Here's Crutchfield dashing ahead. And it's out of bounds, it's gonna stay with NC State. Mackenzie Holmes, so good at finishing inside, has great feet up, under, beautifully done by the sophomore. <laughs> Guys, she's also good at finishing outside because this is her during the stay home quarantine period, working out at her home in Gorham, Maine. She had to find a basket at the end of a cul-de-sac. She was trying to get some work in while we were all staying at home, but the weather didn't comply. And I just love that the neighbors had to keep asking her to get out of the way so they could drive by, so they could get their cars out. <laughs> Street ball. That's what ends up happening. Cardano Hillary, the offensive rebound. Find some space, couldn't finish, and a foul against Indiana after Kunane corralled the rebound. And we've showed that video or photos, similar photos, in a number of games throughout the course of the season. And Mackenzie Holmes said, anytime it's shown she has friends who text her, they're showing the video again. <laughs> but it's too good to not show. That's right. Some things are worth repeating. <laughs> Kanane, too strong, rebound Berger. Berger, what a spin, didn't get the roll, but drew the foul, and will shoot two. Berger, this is the first. All Big Ten first team. 15, we'll go 15. Two times now in her career. A quiet kid, but Coach Morton describes her as one of the fiercest competitors she's ever been around. Sutfin dishes it into Kunane. It's out of bounds off of Indiana. Going to stay here with NC State. And Jada Boyd remains on the bench with those two fouls for NC State. So Ellie Sutfin getting extended time here for NC State. Remember, Holly told us Kayla Jones dealing with a patella injury. Not expected to play. And a turnover here. As the fouls called, I believe, against Kunane. Yeah, Kunane was setting a screen, and she wasn't set before her teammate went, and as a result, she picks up the foul. Sometimes this isn't always your big's fault. The little guy, the guard, has to wait for the big to get set before they make their cut. Twenty four nineteen NC State leading Indiana second quarter action this Sweet 16 matchup. Cardano Hillary. Oh, and just thrown behind Pepper out of bounds. Hey, the NCAA Women's Championship. It continues with the Sweet 16 on Sunday, 1 p.m. on ABC. Five seed Georgia Tech and one seed South Carolina, then another number one seed. At 3 p.m. on ABC, it's Stanford against Missouri State. And at night on ESPN, Oregon faces Louisville at 7, and then Texas-Maryland at 9. Texas-Maryland game is a prime example of defense with Texas and offense with Maryland. 
How about the defense from Cardano Hillary? You talked about her on-ball defense, Rebecca, and she has been a pest. Oh, completely pest. Pesty. Eight turnovers now from NC State. Berger finds Cardano Hillary off on a three and a whistle. It's going to stay right here. Boy, Indiana has been exhausting NC State on the offensive glass at times. Just run alongside, pick your poison. It's just a little poke. Nice job, and she gets the turnover as a result. Yep. That'll get you hyped up. Getting it going on the defensive end. Now, NC State is not a team that turns it over often. They're in the top 10% in the country when it comes to offensive turnover percentage, but they have coughed it up quite a bit in this first half. Camille Hobby into the game for NC State. Brown Turner just couldn't get the angle. Nice D there from Berger. Nice pass, and the finish, Pat Bird to Ghoul Bay for two, and it's a two-point game. And a great catch by Ghoul Bay because that wasn't placed perfectly in her hands. It was a great pass, but a little low. She was able to corral it and score. Hobby trying to gain position on the block. Sutphin will fire, no. A rebound, Cardano Hillary. Here come the Hoosiers down two. Berger behind the back, looking for an angle, and finding one, it's time. Can hear the Indiana faithful, a 13-2 run for the Hoosiers. Perez splashes a three. Reina Perez, so many big buckets this season for NC State. The game winner in the ACC championship game against Louisville. She's perfect from the floor here today. Squeezing between two out of bounds, and it's going to be NC State basketball leading by three. What a run by Indiana, though, to keep this close. Allie Patber with a nice distance side, corral it, finish. And then Berger, the mid-range game. Good. Maria, we are looking forward to that. Our team working hard in the studio, doing an outstanding job. Loved watching you over the past few days, Rebecca. We're coaching the studio, Maria. It's good to be here with you now. Oh, it's Although great. I miss my, my folks in the studio. Kanane banks it in. And NC State back up by five after the 13-2 run from Indiana. Patberg banks it home. Allie Patberg, all Big Ten second team. Perez splashes it in, stopped on a dime, was given the space, said, all right, I'll take it. Again, Perez yet to miss so far in this game. Four, four now from the floor, she has nine points. NC State is a team shooting it at 56.5%. They've just run into issues with turnovers at times in this opening half against this Indiana defense. Mackenzie Holmes, the spin. Couldn't hook it in. Kunane, good defense. And then gave it away. Patberg there. Patberg in for two. Terry Morin really has to be happy with what her team has done on the defensive end. She told us her top two keys, one, transition defense. They haven't given up any fast break points. Two, she said we have to keep NC State off the glass. They have been able to do that. They have not given up an offensive rebound yes. yet. 
Panini, quick turn. I mean, that is just incredible skill. And I love the patience with NC State. They know that they're going to play through Kanane. And even if she passes it back out, they are looking in. Berger could not finish it. Loose ball foul is going to be against NC State. And we'll see who they call it on as Berger is helped back up. Nothing wrong with your big player handling the basketball, but you can't do that. A little lazy pass, and it turns into two points the other way, but very comfortable right here. Over right shoulder, finish left hand, so skilled inside. NC State over the limit, so Berger at the line misses the free throw. 75% from the line this season for Grace Berger. And hits the second. NC State yet to go to the free throw line in this first half. That is not something they do often. I mean, not this infrequently. You know, they get some free throws. It's not a hallmark of their game as Wagner travels. And NC State gives it right back. Indiana has done an outstanding job forcing turnovers in this opening half. Ten turnovers now for NC State. They average fewer than 13 a game. Sweet 16 matchup. A trip to the Elite Eight on the line. Pepper kicks the three. He is good. Nicole Cordano Hillary connecting from downtown. One point game. Perez is fouled on the floor, and we'll see who they call it on. The NCAA Women's Championship continues. Sweet 16 today and Sunday on ESPN Networks. The Elite Eight, March 29th and 30th. And the final four. Friday, April 2nd, 6 and 9.30 Eastern on ESPN Championship. Sunday, April 4th, 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. That three off the mark. Rebound hauled in by Goulbe. Indiana a chance to jump in front. Berger bounces. That foul, by the way, was called against Berger. It was her first, and a whistle here going the other way as Indiana turns it over. I think Indiana's had really good patience the last couple possessions, though, on the offensive end. They've moved the ball side to side multiple, multiple times, really making NC State defend. The first time they completed with a three, that time there was a turnover. Under a minute to go in the half, Perez. Lost the handle, another turnover, 11th of the half from NC State. Two for one opportunity here for Indiana if they want to push a bit. But instead, Terry Morin going to direct traffic. Berger making sure she has the call. Shot clock down to seven. Cardano Hillary with it at five. Shot clock at two. Holmes through the lane, hooks it in. Beautifully done, Mackenzie Holmes in Indiana in front. And now a whistle and a block is called against Indiana and Pat Berg, who wanted an offensive foul. Oh, I thought Pat Berg was there in time. Gave her the step to turn. Woo, previous to that though, what a great, another great offensive possession by Indiana with their patience and then finishing at the end. Well, 12 seconds left in the half, Indiana, a one point lead. Brown Turner, got away from the dig, left it short, rebound Indiana. And the Hoosiers will have the lead at the half against top seed NC State. Indiana outscoring NC State 20 to 11 in the second quarter using feisty, pesky defense and turning over the Wolfpack 11 times 
in that opening half. Mackenzie Holmes able to get things going on the interior. Her coach said Mack is going to have to be big, and she has been big so far in this first half. Efficient inside, face-up game as well. A couple big buckets late in the second quarter to help her team have the one-point lead going into the half. Well, Mackenzie Holmes is with Holly Rowe. Well, Mackenzie, your team has been terrific on defense, really turning them over. What's the key to that? You know, just following the game plan that our coaches gave us, they made us very prepared for this game, and we're prepared for these moments, and it's just a matter of following through with it. And I thought we've done a great job, but we can do so much better, and I, we're going to in the second half. You've shown so much toughness, not only on defense, but you. You're going up against Elisa Kunin, a much bigger player, and you're still finding a way. How so? I mean, I love challenges like this. This is why you play basketball. You you want to step up to the challenge and you want to do everything to prepare yourself for this moment. And, um, you know, I'm, I was ready for it and I just wanted to step up and play the best of my capabilities. All right. Well, so far, so good. Good half there. Thank you. Thank you. Will Indiana be headed to its first ever Elite Eight? Will NC State go to just its second? One point game at the half. Time for Maria Taylor and the gang to break it down in the studio. Thank you, Ryan. Time for the Halftime Report presented by AT&T 5G. Welcome back inside of our studio. Maria Taylor alongside Carolyn Peck and Andy Landers. The Wolfpack have only trailed five times this season at the half, but a big part of it is Indiana's defense. They yeah. scored 11 points off of turnovers. Yeah, they've really done the, the things that they've needed to do well. When you're not playing well and when you get to this point in the tournament, possessions are are really important because possessions are how you score points. Well, what Indiana's been able to do in this half, they've out-rebounded North Carolina State by three. Mm -hmm. They've turned them over six more times than has North Carolina turned them over. That's nine possessions. Yeah. So I'm not playing my best, but I get nine extra shots at it, I'm in it. Well, NC State started out shooting the ball so well. At one point, they were shooting about 58%. Ryan and Rebecca talked about Indiana keeping NC State off the offensive glass where there's not many offensive rebounds left yep. to have. Mm -hmm. So when NC State gets shot opportunities, they're paying it off. So what did Indiana have to do? They turned up the defensive pressure. Now, NC State's going to have to slow down, got to space the floor. If they're going to double team Kunane inside, that's okay. There's other perimeter shooters that NC State has on yeah. the perimeter. Two for 10 from three, so that could improve in the second half. But we also had two games already played here today in our Sweet 16 showcase. The last one, though, this was a good barn burner, a fun one. Michigan taking on Baylor. Nas Hillman, she was great. 16.70%. Oh, she was terrific inside. She made the defense for Baylor change. They had to bring help. When Baylor brought help, mm -hmm. Michigan responded on the perimeter. They responded to the tune of an overtime. Meanwhile, DJ Carrington taking it the other way. Baylor had eight steals, 13 seconds left in overtime. Baylor up 76 to 75. Time to find Moon. This is your play. I love it. You thought they were going Baylor was gonna play keep away, but no, they went and got an extra two to extend that lead to three. Michigan, these are the final seconds, the hope and the prayer, it doesn't go. Dijanae Carrington steps out of bounds before the buzzer goes off. They put just a little bit of time back on the clock in order to give Michigan one last shot, a hope of the first ever final or elite eight for the program, can't get it to go. That means that Baylor moves on to their fifth elite eight in six seasons and Melissa Smith couldn't have been any better. 11 for 11 from the field coach. Yeah, she was terrific. She's a tough matchup for anybody. 6'1", 6'2", has the quickness, abilities uh, of a guard, yet she can take you in and post you. I'm not quite sure who matches up with her in this tournament. Literally no one. That tied for the most field goals without a miss in the women's NCAA tournament. All right, we're going to show you what Caitlin Clark in Iowa did against the Connecticut Huskies and Paige Beckers next. This Halftime Report is presented by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. Welcome back to the AT&T 5G Halftime Report. 
Game one of our Saturday showcase, Iowa taking on Connecticut, which means freshman phenoms and Gino Oriema returns to the bench after testing positive for COVID. But coach, it was Avina Westbrook and Kristen Williams early. Yeah, here we go. You want to get off to a fast start, drop a couple of threes on Iowa and you're rolling. <laughs> Westbrook and Williams, 29 points at the half page. Buck Becker, she was putting in money shots from the mid-range. UConn would lead it 49-34 to 34 at the half, Carolyn. Well, it was just a balanced attack. You know, you've got Aaliyah Edwards. That's another freshman mm. for the UConn Huskies. You've got to keep an eye on. Let them know. Caitlin Clark, let us know in the second half. 14 points in the second, 21 points total, and five assists. But ultimately, it was too much Beckers. It was too much Connecticut. It was too much Aaliyah Edwards, coach. The Huskies were rolling in the Yeah, game. she she was critical in this game from a defensive standpoint at times. She she guarded Caitlin. She rebounded the ball. Oh, what was that? Uh, that Age runs by and <laughs> said, you know, on the well, you know what she slapped. It wasn't on. me. It was hey, that was a welcome back, coach. There you go. Happy to see you. Welcome to the Elite Eight. All right, now the Huskies have moved on, Baylor has moved on, and now they get to play for a chance to be in the final four, but down in the bottom of the bracket in the Mercado region. Your late night cap, guys, is going to be Texas A&M taking on Arizona. What are you looking for, Coach? It's going to be a good one. You're talking about two teams that can defend, but you're also talk talking about a Texas A&M team that has flown under everybody's radar, and they're good. Well, and they've got – it's going to be a head-to-head, -head, two great point guards. Ari McDonald going against Jordan Nixon, and those two are Come key on. to the success for those two teams. Come on, Jordan Nixon. She is clutch. She shoots at 60% from the field in the fourth quarter and OT. Meanwhile, Mackenzie Holmes, she's just spinning him in the cycle. Indiana's up one on NC State. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Big time matchup on the interior as Elisa Kune and Mackenzie Holmes exchanging buckets and a one point lead for Indiana at the half. You take a look at our bracket and the winner of this game is going to face the winner of Texas A&M and Arizona later on tonight. As we welcome you back courtside, Ryan Rucco with the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. We've heard so much about the Indiana defense. Well, we saw the Indiana defense in that first half. Yeah, it was the story for Indiana in that first 20 minutes. They were terrific, forcing 11 turnovers, and it was led by Nicole Cardano Hillary. She was an absolute pest against Reina Perez. Active hands, active feet, always looking to poke the basketball. Sometimes it turned into points the other way. Often it just ended in a possession for her team, but I would not want to have this woman defending me. She is relentless. Balance scoring in that opening half. NC State with nine points apiece from Boyd, Kunane, and Perez. And it's a one point Indiana lead after two quarters. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Guys, I told you before the game about Kayla Jones' patella tendon injury, so Jada Boyd needed to step up big, and she did with nine points. But she went to the bench with two fouls, and that's when things started to go wrong for NC State. They were outscored 18-11 with her on the bench. That's what allowed Indiana to get back in this game. They need her to stay on the floor and continue to score. Yeah, Holly, she's so critical to what they do. So Boyd back out there to begin the third quarter. With those two fouls, Pat Bird can't finish, but drew the foul, and who is the foul on? That one's going to be against Brown Turner. Indiana with the lead at the half. NC State has trailed at the half six times this season. They are 4-1 in the previous five. When we were talking to Coach Westmore yesterday, I said what struck me the latter part of the season about his team is the tremendous toughness they've shown and their ability to come back from those deficits. And he said, well, thank you, but that's not how I've seen it. He said, I think we need to be tougher. Well, we'll see in these next 20 minutes how tough NC State can be. Westmore felt like he, he really wasn't thrilled with the way NC State played in the first two rounds as Holmes 
Comes up with a rejection. Hatberg leading the break, pulling up and hitting. It was the same spot. This time she just needed a defense to be able to hit from that free throw line. Thirty-six, thirty-three, and another turnover forced by Indiana. Patberg, the no-look, home side, stepping and finishing. What a start to the third for the Hoosiers. Westmore told us we cannot let Indiana get going in transition. That's what we've seen the last two possessions. Indiana forcing a turnover and then getting out. Brown Turner hits the jumper. NC State trying to make just their second Elite Eight. As that layup goes down for Cardano Hillary, Indiana looking to head to its first ever Elite Eight. NC State has been dominant in third quarters thus far in the tournament, but not to start here. Holmes again stifling on the inside. Ghoul Bay was there as well. Hatberg, Boyd turns her back. Hatberg finished, plus the foul, and that's number three on Jada Boyd. This is all started on the defensive end for Indiana. They are bottling up the inside, taking away Kinane, and then pushing it the other direction. Again, Allie Patberg to the basket. Timeout taken. Indiana fired up their crowd on its feet. A seven point Hoosier lead. Well, Rebecca, you said it starts on the defensive end for Indiana. Their help post defense has been terrific here in the third quarter, and then they get out and run. Fatberg gets the two at the rim. One end to the other, <laughs> and they're feeling it right now. Fatberg <laughs> saying, yeah, you caused that turnover, Alexa. You know, it was interesting talking with Terry Moore in the seventh year now that she's been the head coach of Indiana. And she said, our kids get equally as excited for defensive game planning as they do offensive. And so I asked her, is that about the kind of kids that you have? Or is that you know, the, the way you just sort of cultivate things in your program? And she said, a little of both. But when we're recruiting, we make sure our kids know they're going to have to be equally excited about defense. Otherwise, it's just not going to be a fit here in Indiana. And they have kids who are excited about defense. And one of the things she said that I loved is we understand what our limitations are. Mm. And team defense can make up for those limitations. Down the floor, Cardano Hillary stepped out of bounds. And Indiana turns it over for just the sixth time. Going back to the third quarter, it's an extended 15 to 2 stretch for Terry Morin's team leading by eight here in the third quarter with 7.30 to go, a trip to the Elite Eight on the line. You see NC State a plus 26 in third quarters the first two games of the tournament. They're a minus seven thus far tonight. And a whistle here against Holmes. That is going to be her second personal. She picked up a personal foul early in the first quarter and has continued to battle, and this is only her second. So she's been able to fight without fouling. Had a lot of help from teammates coming into double when Kanane has gotten a touch. Brown Turner couldn't finish it. Berger, the weak side board. Papper gives it right up. Ghoul Bay gets the step. Too easy. It is a 10-point lead for Indiana. Every time they change sides of the floor multiple times offensively, they get good looks. Now, one thing about NC State, they know how to come back. As Berger able to save it, but right back to NC State. Perez. Sneaking between two, just couldn't finish it. Holmes the rebound. NC State still without a single offensive rebound as Berger splashes in another mid-range J.
Indiana looks awfully comfortable right now. Leading by 12, getting good looks on the offensive end, creating chaos on this end. Kanane, double. Tend to shoot. Boyd on the drive, flips it in, and a much needed bucket for MC State. Indiana had really good rotation, but Boyd's been able to score that way before. In the rotation, getting it at the high post and driving. Indiana is six for six from the floor this quarter. They're 12 for their last 14, as that leaner won't drop for Gulbeck. Benane, Perez, corner three, rims off, rebound, tracked by Kunane, kept it alive, and another chance here for NC State. Hey, if you can't make it to San Antonio but want to be there for the women's Final Four, you can join our cutouts there. Look at us. Join the NCAA in its fan cutout program, supporting the KYOW Cancer Fund, the Pat Summit Foundation, and the San Antonio Food Bank. For more information on how you can benefit these great causes and get your cutout into the Alamo Dome, go to NCAA.com slash WFF cutouts. I'm going to take the Coach Landers cutout with me to dinner tonight. Since I can't actually have dinner with a human being, I'm taking that. I think that's a good move. <laughs> Brown Turner banks it in. Somehow I could see even Coach Landers cutout making great conversation. <laughs> Berger hits again. I'm sure making Paul Pierce proud with that mid-range game. Ten points now for Berger and a whistle here. Gulbe went around boy for the foul. Ten-point Indiana lead. Let's see a little bit of the old man game. Grace Berger, if you're not going to come out on me, I'm just going to stop and pop. Step through when you need to. Westmore told us we have to slow down Indiana's transition, and they have not been able to do that. 14-0 fast break points for Indiana. Look how quickly they get end to end. Just dominating on that end. And for more on Coach Terry Morin, Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Terry Morin was a tough ball player herself. She was a point guard on Purdue's first ever Big Ten championship team. I reached out to her former coach, Lynn Dunn, who has been a mentor to her. And Terry told us yesterday, Lynn Dunn is everything I've ever done in basketball. She's the reason why. Lynn said that she was one of the toughest players she's coached. She was smart, had a high basketball IQ, and it was a coach on the floor. So it's no surprise what a great job she's doing as a coach at Indiana. Do you think Coach Morin is as fun to mic up as Lynn Dunn is? <laughs> no one's as fun as Lynn Dunn. We love micing up Lynn Dunn in the WNBA. Berger nearly had it taken away, got it back. NC State ratcheting up the defense a little bit here. Under four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter of this Sweet 16 game. Indiana started eight of 27 from the floor. They're 13 for 16 since. Minutes here for Chloe Moore McNeil, wearing number 22 for Indiana as Pat Bird curls in another. Again, Ryan. Switching sides of the floor multiple times turns into good looks for Indiana. Great patience here in the third quarter. The name kicks it out. Brown Turner can it to three. Good battle on the boards there. Ooh, it's going to be out of bounds off of Kanane. Looked like it maybe it lasted Berger. It did. Side to side, passing the basketball, making the defense shift, and then the tough shot by Pat Berg. We see you smiling. <laughs> Pat Berg, the senior from the state of Indiana, has 14 points on 6 of 11 shooting at four assists for Allie Pat Berg. These Hoosiers making history for their school. Holmes. Waiting, squeezed it to the corner. Seven to shoot. Gulbe lays it in, and 
and another patient possession for Indiana. The defense shifting to the left side of the floor, leaves the right side open for the drive. What an answer for Crutchfield. Exactly what NC State needs. Crutchfield, two for two from downtown in this game. Holmes can't get that to drop. An opportunity here for NC State. Genesis Bryant getting some minutes for the Wolfpack. Westmore saying he had been so pleased with her practices between the end of the ACC tournament and the start here in Texas. That she earned some minutes, especially with the injury to Kayla Jones, out with a patella injury. Crutchfield, not that time. Berger secures it, looking to push for Indiana. Cardano Hillary bodies in, finishes in the foul. And the Indiana bench up out of their chairs to celebrate. Toughness on the defensive end of the floor and then the ability to quickly go the other way. Great one-handed pass by Berger up to Cardano Hillary. NC State was undefeated against ranked teams this season. The final AP poll, Indiana was the 12th ranked team in the country. They're a four seed in this tournament. And a whistle there against Cardano Hillary. This Indiana team lost in the second round of the Big Ten tournament to Michigan State. As you see what the story of the third quarter has been, and Terry Moran told us, you know, that was kind of a wake-up call. Recommitted on the defensive end of the floor. Said maybe that loss was a blessing in disguise. Well, Indiana's playing well today. Cartagno, Hillary, and Crutchfield really getting physical back and forth. Penane kicks it out. Boy couldn't handle. Seven to shoot. Brown Turner got the angle and got fouled. And Jakia Brown Turner will head to the line for NC State's first free throws of the game. And Brown Turner hits the first. Brown Turner, a player who needs to come alive offensively here for NC State. In these last 12 minutes, very capable of doing that. She had been shooting very well through the first two games of this tournament, 55% for the floors. Berger comes back in for Indiana. Cardano Hillary, Goulbe, Pat Berg. Berger Holmes, the five on the floor for Indiana. Perez, Crutchfield, Boyd, Brown, Turner, Kunane, the five for NC State. Berger again, owning the mid range. That last time it looked like NC State in a zone, and Indiana found the soft spot quickly. 14 point Indiana lead. Brown Turner can't finish, it's whacked out of bounds. Now, I'm not quite sure, is that gonna be a foul against Kunane? Because it looked like it was slapped by Holmes, but they're gonna give it to Indiana. Unless Berger was, make that Kunane was stepping out of bounds as it deflected off of her. Yeah, I don't know. Hatberg, back rim no, rebound secured by NC State. Just one offensive rebound in this game for NC State. That was a key for Terry Morin, and her team has delivered on the defensive glass. Boyd storms in, wow, you could just see the talent of Jada Boyd. Again, her player is the one helping in, so when she closes back out, Boyd can get by her. Goulbe, a three. No. And a chance here for NC State. 
in the last two possessions. Indiana has quick shot the basketball. You haven't seen the side to side that had been so effective. And Perez banks it in and executes the two for one. So NC State feeling a little better about themselves perhaps at the end of this third. Got a three second difference game and shot clock. Cardano Hillary will let it wind. Two to shoot, Cardano Hillary, no. And that is gonna do it for the third quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup. Will Indiana make its first Elite Eight? Fourth quarter coming up next. Well, coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues tonight. Three seed Arizona and two seed Texas A&M. Eight Eastern on ESPN2. And how about the other night, Holly Rowe? Jordan Nixon taking the ball with seconds left and getting that roll. She said, I was so emotional because it was the one year anniversary of the death of her high school coach, Dave Edwards, who passed early on in the COVID pandemic. And she said, he was on my heart. I knew before the game, I set an intention for myself that I was dedicating that game to him. And so she wasn't surprised at all when that basket went in. I actually have a great story that we just finished a feature on Jordan Nixon that we've just posted. And I sent it to Dave Edwards' son, Corey. And he said, you know, I watched every second of that game because Jordan was my dad's favorite. And I knew he would be watching if he was here. Oh. Well, we look forward to watching Jordan in action tonight as Crutchfield begins the fourth with a three for NC State. She is three for three from downtown. It's a seven point game as Holmes gets free for two. Crutchfield, the player that NC State needs to continue to look for on the perimeter because she has been so efficient from the outside. All one and two seeds still intact here in San Antonio. That could change in the next nine minutes and 20 seconds of game time. Just the second turnover of the second half for NC State after they coughed it up 11 times in the first half. Cardano Hillary weaving, wheeling it back out. A 60 to 51 lead for Indiana. Fourth quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup. Holmes putting it on the floor. Too easy for Mackenzie Holmes. So good, those two in the two-man game. NC State is 4-0 this season when trailing after three. So Wolfpack fans are like, we have them right where we want them. Although they have to start getting a little nervous, you would think, as NC State turns it over again. And typically their answer is to get the ball into Elisa Kinane. And Indiana has done a phenomenal job when she catches sending the double team. Nothing has been easy for Kinane. Just nine points, four of nine from the floor. Another look inside. Gulbe lays it in. And Indiana has gotten so many clean looks at the rim in this second half. Really good job moving the basketball, shifting the defense, making extra passes. But what a shot there. Genesis Bryant on the reverse leg. Berger, mid-range, not that time. Rebound snared by Boyd. 11-point lead, that's a quick shot for Indiana. Perez got the whistle against Berger. That'll be the second foul on Grace Berger, and Reina Perez will shoot just the third and fourth free throws of the game for NC State. Last time down the floor, Indiana. Grace Berger, you don't need that shot. It's early in the shot clock. Make the defense work. Every time they've done that, they've gotten good looks. Rebecca for NC State to close this gap, pull off another one of their comebacks. What are they going to need in this fourth quarter? And it has to start on the defensive end. They've got to get stops. I mean, Indiana has done a terrific job offensively shifting them and moving them. But they've got to get stops. If they can get some things in transition, it's gravy. If not, understand that Kunain is drawing so much attention. If you get it to her, she's got to quickly get it out. And Boyd could be a good target to then drive to the basket. She's had success there. 
Fifth meeting all time between these schools. NC State has won the first four. That three, no good, Cardano Hillary. Bryant. Hawked by Pat Berg. Gets it into Boyd. Boyd had a big first quarter, has not been loud since. Picked up her second foul in the second quarter, and Indiana really took off after she went to the bench. Holmes, what footwork for Mackenzie Holmes. Getting to that left-handed finish. Bryant flips it back out. Boyd, that's going the other way. Jada Boyd hit with her fourth personal foul. It's a post player. You want to play the speed you want to play. Don't let the defense rush you. Holmes gets the basketball. Assess the situation. Feel it with a couple dribbles. And how about the step through? She has really played well today. Mackenzie Holmes from Maine. Honorable mention in AP's All-Americans, the first ever member of the Hoosiers to accomplish that. This school on the brink of some more history for Indiana. Shot clock at six. Berger. Leans, takes, no. Nice box out by Crutchfield. That was a hard-earned rebound. Still plenty of time left for NC State. How about Berger fronting Boyd in the post? Pushed her to the perimeter. Kanane turns and flips it in. Heck of a finish there from Elisa Kanane. What a tough shot, and on that possession, no help came, so she had the one-on-one. -on -one. 11 points, nine rebounds for Kanane. Hatberg zipping through, couldn't drop it home. And a chance here for NC State. Crutchfield gives it up. Kunane can hit the three. Would have been a big one for NC State. Five minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup. Berger alone in the corner. Can hit the three. And Kunane secures it. Kanane on the block, finishes, plus the foul. A chance for three for Elisa Kanane. Cardano Hillary got hit, and so she was not able to defend on the perimeter and prevent the pass from going in. And Kanane got deep position, no help is there. Great finish. We saw the reaction from Kayla Jones on the bench, who is unable to play in this game because of a patel injury. A player Westmore calls the glue to the team, but Elisa Kanane pointed out her vocal nature has made her a factor even injured on the bench. We see her not sitting down, up on her feet, cheering on her team. Eight point game. The last few possessions, NC State in a zone again. Pat Bird. Six to shoot, flips it up, no, out of bounds. It last hit NC State, and it will be Indiana basketball. 4.34 to go, a trip to the Elite Eight on the line. Indiana leads by eight. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Oh, Maria, we're looking forward to that one. And to the finish here, NC State has got it back down to single digits and trailing entering the fourth quarter this season. You see the comebacks they have had. 
Tonight they trailed by 10 after three. 4.35 to go in this fourth. Four on the shot clock here for Indiana. Berger has to get it in, finds Patberg. Big bucket for Allie Patberg. How many tough shots has Allie Patberg made today? 16 points for Patberg. Genesis Bryant, too long. Loose ball foul, gonna go against Indiana. And that will be the third team foul against the Hoosiers in this fourth. And the way they have crashed the defensive glass. NC State only one offensive rebound all game. Just incredible. <laughs> NC State averages about 11 offensive rebounds per game. As Holmes is going to check out after her fourth foul. So that was number four on Holmes. She will head to the bench. See how Indiana handles that. Brown Turner short. Berger couldn't claw it, and it's out of bounds. To NC State. Berger thought it was hit from behind by NC State. That's the universal sign for I don't agree. <laughs> Watching the hands over do, the face. Do you see that a lot in the Lobo Russian yeah, house? We do, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Rose gives that face the most. No, it's me with my husband. <laughs> Perez stops, dishes, Bryant. Bryant getting meaningful minutes here. Kunane worked hard for the position and is fouled by Gube. Good decision, good decision. Holmes is out of the game with four fouls. Get the ball into Kunane and let her go to work. Holmes going to come back in now with 3.53 to go. 16 points. A 10-point Indiana lead. NC State 1-12 all time in Sweet 16 games. Wes Moore has built something very special here at NC State. Trying to get this school to just its second Elite Eight ever, its first since 1998. For Indiana, it'd be its first Elite Eight in school history. Now NC State bringing the full court pressure. Eight point game. Cardano Hillary backs it out. If you're Indiana, you want to continue to be aggressive offensively, but in a smart way. Understand what's been working for you. Holmes, two to shoot, put it on the deck, and an offensive foul, and that will be number five on Mackenzie Holmes. I love Terry Moran's reaction, though, because you have to lead in the face of this. You have just lost your leading score, and you have to stay positive here. I think that's the right call, Ryan. Yeah, she lowers her shoulder, pushes out with her arm, but Terry Moran's reaction was to clap and say, let's go, guys, we still got this. So how does Indiana survive the final three-plus minutes without Mackenzie Holmes? Kunane going to work, leaning in, didn't get the whistle or the bucket, rebound secured by Indiana. Deandra Brown into the game for Indiana, replacing Holmes. She was there defensively on that possession. Hatberg trapped, finds Brown. Brown flips it in off the bench and looking fresh. How about Brown? Played three minutes in this game until she just came back in. Perez, they need it, they have it. Timeout taken. A seven-point Indiana lead, 2.37 to go in the fourth. A trip to the Elite Eight is on the line in our third riveting game of the afternoon and evening. NC State has shot the three ball well today, eight of 17, and Perez has two of them, none bigger than the one she just made. Perez now 15 points. 
Six of eight from the floor. She has been clutch this season for NC State. Crutchfield has been clutch throughout her career. Dynamic from downtown. She's three of three today, and she's 19 of 27 in her NCAA tournament career. And expect NC State to bring the full court pressure. We saw them do that the last time down as well. Try to create some turnovers, uncomfortable moments for Indiana. What's important for Indiana if they're gonna hold on, Rebecca? To absolutely take care of the basketball. And when they go the other end, work the clock, get good shots, but here, handle the full court pressure. They do. Cardano Hillary tried to go around the back though, and it's gonna be a foul against Brown. And Indiana's over the limit. NC State will shoot free throws. They broke the press and Cardano Hillary, I don't think that dribble was necessary at that point. She gets it, yeah, just keep it on your left side. Just keep it on your left side. Now, are they going to give free throws or no here? There's a debate as to whether or not there are going to be free throws here and the officials will confer. And I think the question probably is whether or not NC State had possession there or if it was an offensive foul against Indiana. So it will not be free throws. Kanane kicks it out. Boy, connects on a three. It's a four point contest. In and out. Kunane to Boyd has been there for much of this game. Turning the corner, Cardano Hillary couldn't finish. Loose ball, a scrap for it, and it's gonna be a jump. The possession arrow belongs to NC State. I don't understand why you take that shot, Ryan. Why so early in the clock? If it's a wide open layup, sure, but if not, work the ball around. Check that, Indiana has the possession arrow. Berger gives it up to Pepper. Seven to shoot. Berger spinning, elevating, can't hit. Indiana trying to drag themselves to the finish line here. NC State with a real chance, down just four. Boyd putting it on the deck. Jada Boyd lays it in. It's a two-point game. And Indiana needs a timeout. Mackenzie Holmes is fouled out. Indiana trying to hang on, and NC State has made it a two-point game with 121 to go. Jada Boyd posting up the freshman. And when it's not Kanane with the basketball, Indiana has not sent a double team. So Boyd was able to go one-on-one -on -one and finish nicely. Two timeouts remaining for each team. NC State, plenty of fouls to give. Indiana is over the limit. The possession arrow now belongs to NC State. 121 to go in the fourth. And how does Indiana get themselves to a victory and stay calm without Mackenzie Holmes on the floor? I think that's the key, right, is to have poise because NC State has been on a huge run. Indiana has nice balance, has had nice balance today, but their leading score on the season out with her five fouls. 121 to go in the fourth. Indiana trying to make its first ever Elite Eight. NC State trying to get to its second. Berger turning the corner. Gould Bay. Gould Bay on the drive. Brown can't finish, but was fouled. Keandra Brown will shoot two. What Keandra Brown is doing is really difficult. As a freshman in a Sweet 16 game, 
You only play three minutes until the fourth quarter. You have to come in when one of your leaders is out with foul trouble, and she has done nicely. Only taken 16 free throws on the season, but shot at 81% from the line. Two-point game. Brown misses the first. Indiana 6 of 12 from the line in this game. And Brown misses both. Crutchfield the rebound. NC State down two. Crutchfield flirted with backcourt there for a moment. I'd like to see them play through Kinane on this possession. Inside of a minute to go. Perez has been clutch all season. Brown Turner 10 to shoot. Perez dips inside, feeds underneath. Kinane lost it out of bounds and it is going to be NC State basketball. What a pass inside. Oh, Ooh. Berger was asking for the for the review, and it looks like she's going to get it. But it's important to note the call on the floor was NC State basketball. Has to be clear and conclusive for them to overturn that in terms of the possession. The other thing to note is the shot clock reset. We are going to review the out of bounds on the floor. The shot clock reset because Berger had gained possession there. It wasn't a deflection. You'll see Berger. Possession there, so shot clock resets and... Oh yeah, that's off a of burger. It's gonna be NC State basketball. So after a great defensive possession, the shot clock about to expire and a turnover because Berger possessed it and then Kunane knocks it out of bounds off of her. It's gonna be NC State ball with a fresh shot clock. We'll wait for the official confirmation, but based on that replay, there certainly didn't look like anything to indicate that it is going to be Indiana basketball instead. And if it is NC State basketball and they don't score on their initial baseline out of bounds play, and they end up in a quarter court set, I would say play through Kanane. Even if it means getting it into Kanane and back out, that's when they've had the opportunities for dribble penetration. This was a 70 to 60 Indiana lead with 2.53 to go. And NC State on an 8-0 run since. That almost directly coincided with Mackenzie Holmes fouling out. She fouled out a possession before that lead improved to 70 to 60. But Indiana has really struggled with her on the bench. And Wes Moore essentially gets a timeout here that he doesn't have to take and can talk to his team about what he wants to run. But it's clear to me, not only off of her leg, but you'll see Berger's hand, hand and knee, the last one to touch it without question. And whether or not she got bumped does not come into play in the NCAA. Whereas in the WNBA, it does. Or are they looking to see if Kunin's foot was on the line when she touched it? Mm, that's an interesting point, Rebecca. After review, the call on the floor is confirmed. It is white ball. Due to possession attained by red, we will reset the shot clock. Rebecca, that's a really interesting point you make about whether or not Kunane's foot was actually out of bounds when she made contact with the basket. It looks to me on those last two replays like it was. I wasn't looking for that initially, but when we blew it up, it looked like it was. Instead, it's going to be NC State basketball. And as we mentioned before, the shot clock resets because Berger had gained possession. 
Under 40 seconds left, NC State down to a trip to the Elite Eight on the line. Kanane working hard, turning, spinning, can't finish. Loose ball, saved to the corner. Patberg has it for Indiana. And she is fouled by Brown Turner. And now NC State will have to take two more fouls to put Indiana at the line. And a timeout called by Indiana. Let's check in real quickly here with Maria Taylor. All right, Maria, we're looking forward to that game. This is the third straight outstanding game we've had today. Started with UConn and Iowa. A great, entertaining battle. UConn ended up winning, then Baylor holding off Michigan. And here, NC State trying to come back against Indiana. But it's Indiana basketball after a big stop on the defensive end. 25.6 seconds to go. Hoosiers by two. They have one timeout remaining. NC State with two. Indiana over the limit. NC State still with two fouls to give. Indiana needs to cleanly inbound the basketball, and then when they do, they have to avoid a tie-up and expect the foul to come. Berger, there's the foul from Kunane. And remember, Indiana has struggled mightily shooting free throws today. They're just six of 13 from the line. Normally, as a team, they shoot it at 72%. Hatberg flings it into the backcourt. Cardano Hillary being chased and is fouled by Perez with 21.1 seconds remaining. Am I right that Cardano Hillary is 50% on the season from the free throw line? You are right. I mean, she was wide open, but NC State has to be thrilled that she's the one who ended up with the ball in her hands. Big free throw here is good. Cardano Hillary knocks down the first. A three-point Indiana lead. The second is also good. A flex and a scream from Nicole Cardano Hillary as her team celebrates the two made free throws. It's a two-possession game. Indiana in front. Timeout taken by NC State with 21.1 seconds remaining. You don't often see flexes post free throws, but when you're a 50% free throw shooter and you hit big ones like this, you flex. <laughs> Huge. Huge free throws, and what an impactful game she has had today on both ends of the floor. From Spain, the all-time leading scorer at George Mason. Terry Morin calls her a bucket getter. 12 points in this game and four steals for Cardano Hillary. You see the reset, four-point lead for Indiana. It's NC State's ball. They also have the possession arrow. Neither team with a foul to give, each team with one timeout remaining. I would look for NC State to attack the basket. If you can get a quick two, you take it. If you can suck in the defense and have a shooter open on the perimeter, then you pass back out. Crutchfield, a shooter to watch. She's three for three from downtown today. Here is Bryant, getting big minutes down the stretch. Perez on the attack, the leaner rolls in. It's a two-point game, 13.5 seconds remaining, and Indiana spends its final timeout. NC State trying to get the basketball, going towards the basket. Reina Perez hit a huge shot to win the ACC tournament against Louisville. This is a similar look that she gets here. And now defensively, NC State has got to try to get a steal on the inbounds pass or a quick foul if they do not get that or a tie up. 13.5 seconds remaining in this fourth. Indiana, a two point lead on NC State. NC State has had a season littered with comebacks. This is just the fifth time they've trailed entering the fourth quarter. The previous four times, 
they have come back to win. This is an NC State team that has beaten the AP number one ranked team twice this season. They've been in high leverage situations and they have come through. Important to note, NC State has one steal on the day. Rebecca, let me just ask you this. What do you think? Oh, it's NC State who took that time out, not Indiana. Oh, I think now Indiana is going to take Indiana's a timeout. Now Indiana is going to take a timeout. Rebecca, why would NC State have burned their last time out there? I don't know. Because you know that Indiana is going to want to take the timeout so they can advance the basketball. Right. And of course, Westmore wants to be able to set up his pressure, but he had to assume that Indiana would have taken the timeout. Now, if you're NC State, you're not able to advance the basketball. Wow. That is an incredibly unorthodox decision. And so now both teams are out of timeouts as Indiana takes theirs to advance the basketball. You can't adva advance the basketball when your opponent takes a timeout. So that is why they took the timeout after NC State did. But back, back to your question, I have no idea why NC State would have taken that. Well, I'm sure that's going to be a question for Wes Moore in the postgame. It's one he obviously is going to want to answer after a win rather than a loss. Indiana, a two-point lead, 13.5 to go in this fourth. Now, remember, Indiana has to inbound it. They do not have any timeouts remaining. And, Ryan, you can foul before the ball is inbounded as long as it's players who are involved in the play. Not the same as the away from the play foul that we see at the professional level. Pat Berg will get it in. Pat Berg finds Goulbay, gets it back, and she's fouled by Brown Turner with 11.3 seconds remaining and two free throws coming here for Allie Pat Berg. 78.5% in her career, 75% this season, but she's one for three from the line tonight. Hatberg's first, rims off. It's been a fantastic game for Patberg. She's had to do this without Mackenzie Holmes, you just saw on the bench. The final few minutes after fouling out. Hatberg hits the second. It's a three-point game. Kunane checks in. Each team out of timeouts. Great sub because that gets you the time to set up what you want to set up, a late game play that you've already gone through in practice. If you're Indiana, do you consider fouling? You do. Perez, seven seconds left. Perez, through the rain, stops, flips it out. Kunane, two seconds, heaves, misses. That's it. Indiana, for the very first time, is headed to the Elite Eight. They take down top seed NC State, 73-70 the final. What a win for Terry Morin and the Hoosiers. As NC State walks off utterly disappointed. NC State looking for dribble penetration, trying to suck the defense in to get a clean look from outside. And Kanane gets a decent look, but how fitting that Indiana, who was so disruptive on the defense end, whose identity is on the defensive end, wins this game with a defensive stop. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. How about the night for Nicole Cardano Hillary? For a team that relies on its defense, she set the tone for them. Three steals in the first half. Pesty, disruptive not letting anything be easy for NC State.
and then the 50% free throw shooter hits two huge ones with under a minute to go. And when you hit free throws like that, you get to speak with our very own Holly Rowe. Well, Nicole, you step to the free throw line in a crucial moment in this game, and you're a 50% free throw shooter. How were you able to knock both of those down in that crucial moment? Um, yes. Uh, honestly, um, the confidence that my team had in me was all I needed. Um, I have been struggling, as you said, 50% um, on my free throws, but you know, when when it's game time, you got to be you got to be ready to step up to that line and. And I feel like that's what we needed for the team, and, and I got it done. So I, I just am so excited that I get to celebrate with these amazing people, and, you know, they deserve it all. So You guys really had to fight to finish this game. One of your heart and soul players, Mackenzie Holmes, fouls out. How hard was it to close out this feisty NC State team? I mean, like you said, Mackenzie is an extremely big part of our team, but our bench, KB, stepped up everyone that came in chloe key everyone that came in they did what they had to do and and i mean that shows that shows our team working at every second of the day and they they deserve it well thank you so much making history to the elite eight for the first time thank you nicole thank you well indiana for the very first time headed to the elite eight where they will meet the winner of Texas A&M and Arizona. That's coming up next here on ESPN2. Once again, the final score, Indiana 73, NC State 70. Coming up next, it's Arizona, Texas A&M. For our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Jimmy Platt, Holly Rowe, Rebecca Lobo, and our entire crew. I'm Ryan Rucco. Thanks so much for joining us. What a fun game. Now here's Maria Taylor in the studio. Maria Taylor alongside Carolyn Peck and Andy Landers. And to be honest, we've really just been enjoying these close games. Right? <laughs> we almost had another overtime, but how about Indiana? They lose their top score in McKinsey Holmes. Three minutes and 24 seconds left. Didn't phase them as they were able no, to hold on no. to No, so, so poised. Continued to make the plays that they needed to, to make and fought off a tough NC State comeback. Yeah. Uh, you know, Indiana is a team that has three double figure scores mm -hmm. in this game. They had five. Mm -hmm. The thing that jumps at me the most, they're plus four rebounding, but they turned North Carolina State over 17 times yep. while they only turned it over nine times. Mm -hmm. You think those possessions didn't mean a win for them? They sure did. Well, there was a lot of that when the ball came inside to NC State. The double teams causing the turnovers there, and NC State had to use so much energy to make their comeback yeah. in that ball game that down the stretch, even with Holmes out of the game, they could not make a difference. NC State started playing inside, kicking out for the threes, but they just came out short. Yeah, and NC State, you know, they did turn the ball over a lot, but Indiana turned those into 20 points off of the turnovers, and like you said, Coach, that is obviously what really mattered. And how about this, guys? Vegas said it was Indiana by two. I should have listened. We should have listened. It was Indiana <laughs> by three. They tried to tell you the Hoosiers, they're still dancing their very first Elite Eight you, appearance, but that's you, not the only game we have. We have a nightcap. You ladies don't need to be gambling. <laughs> I gamble on you all day long, Coach. Everybody is. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try not to gamble the rest of the night away, but we will see you at halftime, the last game of our Sweet 16 Showcase on Saturday, Texas A&M and Arizona. Please enjoy tip-off.